today is absolutely inspirational and it really makes a difference. I know people will be drifting off, but what you've done today by even just being here for a little bit makes a huge difference. I, I sat down, as we all do during the week, to, uh, to watch the news. And it's a hor horrific feeling of some uh, impending horrors that you're going to be seeing on the news, but you force yourself to sit down and you have to watch it. But uh, when, when I think about going ahead and watch it, I come from a sporting background, and it's a I mean, a privilege to be part of Irish sport for Palestine. 300 plus athletes who want to stand up for Palestine. And, uh, Generally, as sports people, you, you try and think with a, a positive disposition. You, you look for ways that you can make a difference and make something change. But when you see what's unfolding on our screens for the last 100 plus days, it makes me physically sick. And it's very hard to see some positives. It can be very hard to see the hope. But then I, I think of people in Gaza. I think of the, the flag. And I think of the legends like Rifat al Harir a heroic Palestinian writer. You'll all be familiar with him. He was cruelly assassinated, deliberately, by the Israeli Zionist regime. But he, he will live in our hearts, in my heart, forever. One of the last things, one of the last things Rifat wrote before he was assassinated. It's a line that stays with me, and every day I watch Palestine. He said, if I must die, let it bring hope. And there will be hope, there will always be hope, as long as we listen to the words of the Palestinian people. It can be so hard and tempting to, to give up, but we will never give up. We will never forget Rifat. We will never forget him, Raja, the six-year-old beautiful girl, who was waiting to be saved. Waiting while her family had already been slaughtered. But we won't, we won't give up on you, Hind. We'll never give up on you. The Israelis and Netanyahu want us to forget about you. Ursula von der Leyen wants us to move on to something else. Rishi Sunak wants us to forget about Gaza. Joe Biden obviously wants us to forget about Gaza. But. As I watched the news that night, I saw, and it was, as the Rafa was unfolding, the horrors that they're facing, it is, the, the camera panned across to a, a father and his young child, she, he was maybe two or three years old, and in the background was a sea of tents that the Palestinian resilience, they're, they're, they're going to live in those, in that sea behind them, and on the other side is the fence enforced by Egypt and by Israel, because Israel controls what they do. But the father, and I looked and I, I had to pause it, the father was lifting up his child, his two-year-old child, and raising her up to the sky. And in that moment you could see the, the happiness and the joy, it's unrestrained in that two-year-old's face. And I could relate to it, because most people do if they have kids or they see a kid and they can see the happiness when they fly up for that brief second into the sky into that blue gas and sky. That child was so happy, despite the horrors they had faced, despite everything being hunted and, and shoved right down to the bottom of Gaza, they still had the joy and the happiness and the hope that they'll be free. And it was there in the faces, and I look at that face, and I look at the dad, and I think of Rifat, and we will never forget them. We will never forget Gaza. And I think, we will never forget Al Shifa Hospital. We will never forget Khan Yunus. We'll never forget the West Bank. And it gives me such hope to look out at this. And this is the hope that Rifat spoke about. No matter what you think, and we might think the Zionist project is on a, a strong footing, but it's not. The Zionist project is in its last chapter. It's in its death throes. It's coming to an end. This is the hope, and this is the reality of what they've done. We will never forget Gaza. And as there's concrete ways for us to channel the hope, which Zoe and Fatin and Karen, the legend from the Dunstores workers, who should have statues erected to them, 
The boycott is the way forward. The boycott works, and it's working more and more now thanks to the ICJ and what they put on the table about plausible genocide. And as us as part of, we pledge as part of Sports for Palestine, the sporting boycott is working. It's got to a stage it's never been before. And we're going to keep pushing. Who wants to play? Who would want to play a match against someone who's taken part in genocide? Which most likely a lot of these Israeli athletes have. It's horrendous. But the hope is still there. And the hope will live on. In all of us, in all of what we do. So I just want to thank everyone for coming out and staying here and to remember until our dying breath the words of Rifa. If he dies, there will still be hope. And we will keep going until my last breath to free, free Palestine. Free, free. Free, free. Free, free. Thank you, everyone.